In this problem, we're told a 1200 kilogram car rolling on a horizontal surface has a speed of V equals 66 kilometers per hour when it strikes a horizontal coiled spring and is brought to rest in a distance of 2.2 meters. What is the spring constant of the spring? So there's a few things you need to know in order to solve this problem. So you need to know that kinetic energy, right? So the kinetic energy of this car, right, is going to be equal to the formula. And so there's a formula for kinetic energy, which is one half mv squared. And so there's another formula that you need to know, which is the potential energy of the spring, right? So if you want to solve for the energy of this spring, it, I'm just going to call it in this case uh, PE, right? So the PE of the spring, it's going to be equal to this formula right here, which is one half kx squared, where k is the constant of the spring, which is what we're solving for, and x is the distance. So these are the formulas you need to know. And so what you need to realize about this problem is that this car is going to have this uh, kinetic energy, right? But it's going to hit this spring and it's going to transfer, or not transfer the energy, but the energy of the spring is going to be equal to uh, the kinetic energy of the car. And so once you realize that, you can actually solve this problem just by setting these equal, right? Because this is going to be the formula for the kinetic energy of the car, and then it's going to transfer into the spring, right? The uh, potential energy of this spring, which is going to be equal to this formula right here. So what we can do is just set them equal. So one half mv squared is equal to one half kx squared. So we just got to solve for k, right? That's what we're trying to solve for. And we have all the other variables. We have the mass of the car, the velocity of the car. Uh, we have the distance, right? So notice how the one half is going to cancel. So mv squared is equal to kx squared. We're solving for k, right? So divide both sides by x squared. And you're going to get that k is equal to mv squared over x squared. Uh, there's a few things that you have to do before we actually plug in the numbers, though. Notice how velocity is in kilometers per hour, but we're using kilograms and meters. So we need to change this into be meters per second. So we have 66 kilometers per hour. And so if we multiply this uh, by 1,000 meters, right? Because there's we're trying to get it in meters per second. So there's 1,000 meters for every one kilometer. So that's going to get rid of the kilometers. And then we know for every one hour, there's going to be 3,600 seconds, right? Because there's 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour. So that would get rid of that. And so if you do 66 times 1,000, then multiply by 1 over 3,600, you're going to get it equals to 18.33. And so this will be meters per second, right? And so now we have it in the correct way, so we can just plug in. So we have all the numbers. So the constant of our spring is going to be equal to the mass, which is 1,200, multiplied by the velocity, which is 18.33 squared, over the distance it travels, right? 2.2 squared. So if you go ahead and do this, 1,200 times 18.33 squared divided by 2.22, you're going to get 83,318.18, right? 83,318.18. And so I'm just going to rewrite this, though, as in scientific notation. So K is going to be equal to about 8.3 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, so times 10 to the 4. And the way we measure K, it's going to be measured in Newton meters. So you can just write it as Newton meters like this, right? So K is equal to 8.3 times 10 to the 4 Newton meters. And so yeah, this will be your answer and hopefully you found this video useful.